In today's video, Steven says you should be eating 100 grams of protein or you're missing out on some gains. All right, guys, this is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com, and that's not exactly true. What we're going to talk about today with Stephen Bogrand in an episode of Science with Steve. It's been a little man. And if you haven't watched our old episodes, we like to break down the evidence, the science, the research, because my man here has got a master's degree in exercise science. Stephen, are you excited about the results of the study? No. <laughs> All right, yes. so let's talk a little bit about the study design, what they were trying to show, what it resulted in, and then we'll give everybody some real-world advice on how they can apply this or not. Yeah, so this study was looking at very high protein intakes and how that triggers muscle growth or protein stimulus, essentially. And so we have, we'll say, semi-limited evidence out there in terms of how we look at the workouts, the protein, the amount of protein ingested, and then how that ends up building our muscles and making us better in our physique goal. And so this one looked at a placebo, which was no protein, a 25 grams of protein, serving and a hundred grams of protein serving after a full body workout. And if we look at the other research in the past, the only times that we really do see that the higher protein intakes might be beneficial is after a full body workout, not after any kind of training a specific muscle part, no push pull legs, none of that kind of stuff, whole body workouts. Okay. So, I mean, whole body protein synthesis, you would think like, because the legs are such big muscles, the backs are such, big, so that could be inducing this. I'm curious, 25 grams Seems a bit low to me as someone who walks around at about 220 pounds. I don't believe that would be enough on a per meal basis for me to get the benefits of the protein synthesis. And there are a couple of things that really matter when we talk about how much protein you get. And the first one is your body weight, your body mass, how much muscle you carry around. The more muscle that we carry, the larger we are, the more protein we need in a sitting to trigger that muscle growth, that protein synthesis. And so maybe if you are, you know, five foot tall and 102 pounds, 25 should be absolutely more than enough. But if you are walking around at 220, we're going to say that's probably under the threshold that we'll need to actually make sure that we're maximizing and doing the right things for muscle growth for you, nutritionally speaking. Yeah. So it's interesting because when we talk about protein after a workout, I don't think many of us, maybe we do, go and just go, I'm just going to go have only protein, right? So 100 grams of protein that's about, what, 400 calories or so of food. Yeah. But if you combine that with something else, so they were just eating protein in this study. Protein only. Because they weren't looking at the effect that carbohydrates or fats have. They're okay. simply looking at protein synthesis, and okay. only protein is going to impact that. And that was elevated for up to 12 hours? Is that 12 correct? hours they saw an elevation with the 100-gram protein feeding. I mean, so for an application for somebody that maybe is, has a busy job, someone that's like a nurse, you know, I have clients that they have these long shifts. They go to the gym after they can handle a little bit more protein and not have the negative effects. I think there is a connotation where some people associate you can't eat more than, say, 40 grams of protein or it's wasted. Can you explain what the science is there? <laughs> and so they're looking at some of those older studies that are looking at how we traditionally train single body parts or maybe a couple of body parts and where that kind of protein threshold of, all right, we don't get any extra muscle protein synthesis or muscle growth right. from anything over this amount. And that's what people are really referring to. But again, we do have a few studies that show with maybe whole body, those higher protein intakes might be beneficial. We also have some other protein studies that say, hey, you need to have enough time in between these feedings to yeah. actually continue that over time as well. Yeah, so the, the research with our coaching, with ProPhysique, our business, what we tend to focus on is spacing out protein feedings yeah. multiple times per day. So we give the body time to digest elevate protein synthesis, return to baseline normals, and then we repeat that. We find that this is going to be the best option for allowing people to add muscle over time. So that usually ends up being about four meals per day with someone getting four large doses of protein. Now, I will at times focus on three, depending on my hunger, and sometimes maybe even five. Those are kind of the sweet spots for me, but I also don't limit protein. I've never had a fear of saying, you know what, this meal is going to have 80 or 90 grams of protein. I believe that the most important aspect of protein is your daily total. Yes, absolutely. From there, it starts to diminish as far as importance because if you're spacing out your protein perfectly, but you're only getting 20 grams per meal, that's not gonna have the same impact. Correct, especially for you or myself, that's just not going to be enough. And we need to also make sure that we mention the fact that it needs to be complete protein, which means you are having all of your essential amino acids within that. So if you're a plant-based dieter, or you are a vegetarian dieter, that means you need to make sure that you're either getting those options that you can eat within your diet, 
that are complete proteins or matching your proteins and pairing them appropriately to get enough of those complete proteins as well. Yeah, and th so they used whey protein. That was how they get their... They used milk protein. Milk protein. So th explain that because isn't whey derived from milk? Whey is derived from milk, so is casein. And so whey tends to be a faster digesting protein and casein tends to be a slower digesting protein. And if we overcomplicate it, then we can really go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. we'll just say milk protein. Milk protein. Okay, so years ago, my body gave me a big middle finger, and it said, you're no longer able to have milk protein, right? So my company, Core Nutritionals, actually helped develop a vegan protein, but we also do include things, some of the essential amino acids, to make sure it's a full-spectrum protein that does not give me digestive issues. So yeah. you do have to pay attention to that when you're looking at protein sources that are not milk-based or kind of probably meat-based, which have a little bit higher leucine and some of the other amino acids. So based on this research, who's doing full body workouts? Maybe somebody that does like a CrossFit or... Maybe a gymnast, somebody who does a okay. lot of calisthenics. So those kinds of individuals okay. might be doing more full body workouts yeah. or maybe any individual who's just working out three times a week. Yeah. They're not trying to maximize their muscular potential in the gym. Yeah. And for those individuals, Maybe this is a great argument for why time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting could be a really good option for them based yeah. on their schedule and their lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, so I did try to do some intermittent fasting a few years ago. The problem I struggled with was, in fact, getting my protein into that you know, eight-hour window when my meals were so large because it's not just protein that you're consuming. You know, We're also consuming carbohydrates and fats, get the most benefit out of our training sessions. And so... Whatever works best for you, I, I think what this study just shows is like, hey, if you want to get more than 40 or 50 grams of protein in a single sitting and perhaps you just trained, then more power to you. You can actually get the benefit of that protein. You don't have to feel like you're wasting it. Right. And of course, maybe you just like eating more protein. Yeah. Great. Let's justify that behavior. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like it does feel good to go to the gym and crush it for a few hours and then go eat a big meal. You do feel like you accomplished something. But I... Probably I'm not going to be suggesting to my clients that they start getting 100 grams of protein post-workout. It gets expensive. Yeah, and it also just becomes an encumbrance on the rest of the day. To me, that just doesn't sound ideal. However, there may be some scenarios, and I've had clients in this situation where they go through periods where they can only get one or two meals a day. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do to get your, your numbers in. So, Absolutely. So again, the focus is your total protein. So why don't we talk about that number? That's a good number to give people here. How much protein should someone be focused on getting a day, Stephen? If we make it simple for any of us who are here in the States, I like to go uh, one gram per pound of your lean body mass or state, yeah. if you're a competitor, your projected stage weight. Yeah. I think that's a pretty safe place to be. If you want to overdo it a little bit, which a lot of people do, there's nothing wrong with that. You can just go one gram per pound of your body weight, uh, as it can also really help with things like satiety, especially while you're trying to diet and keeping you on plan. Yeah. Food volume is good when you have a little bit more protein per meal. And if someone's just overweight and they're just like more of a lifestyle approach to fat loss and they want to know how much protein, I usually say about a gram per pound of your goal weight. Yeah. You know, so if you're 250 pounds and you want to weigh 190, 190 grams of protein is going to be more than enough for your needs to build muscle, to stay full and to get the most out of your training, whatever that training might look like. All right. Any other thoughts on this study? Yeah, I would love to see it redone with maybe animal proteins or actual vegetable proteins, like a pea protein isolate, yep. some other things. And then I would love to see them try and replicate it because when we see one study, we right. don't take that as the new rule that determines everything that we do. I know this is a very popular study right now, but it has not undone all the things that we've done in our entire human existence. Well, and there were a few problems with the study that you noticed initially, correct? I couldn't find in the one that I was looking at, and I did have more than the abstract. I couldn't find the study participants. Right. And I think that's important because you brought up the amount of protein can be related to your, your body mass. So if they don't explain what their participants look like, you said they could have all been professional power lifters and Absolutely. that changes things versus soccer moms. Absolutely. Uh, not, not that soccer moms can't be powerlifters. You absolutely can. So we just need more research in this topic yeah. before we really make any hard, concrete decisions about whether or not we want to be doing the 100-gram protein challenge. Right. And, <laughs> and to be honest, more protein is good. I think the average dieter is very well aware of that. And yeah. so I think even now when I go out to restaurants, I've noticed there tends to be the option to add protein, yes. add a second serving of chicken or steak or whatever it might be. So the awareness for protein is there. Protein supplements sell very well. Our, the vegan protein that I make that I love, yeah. uh, it, it sells ve very well. And the company doesn't even really focus on that spectrum of, of product. So 
there is awareness. And I think if you even ask the general person, oh, I should probably get more protein, right? So right. this is just, I think, research that shows like there is potential that you should be eating more protein or you can eat more protein. Don't limit it just based on you think like, oh, I won't be absorbing it. You're going to absorb it. All right. Science with Steve. Uh, guys, go check out Steven's channel below. He answers questions and has great topics over there as well.